Hi y'all, my last video for the night, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the developments on the left, both here in the United States and in the United Kingdom. If you don't follow UK politics, uh, you could take my word for this, or I guess you could, you could go look it up. But in their Labour Party, their version of our Democrats, there's a schism going on uh, that is going on between two major camps. And in the United States, there's a schism going on between two major camps in the Democratic Party, the San Sanders supporters and the Clinton supporters. And uh, obviously the Sanders supporters don't like the Clinton people because of all the dirty tricks and everything that's been going on. And you have a similar split that's happening, as I mentioned, in the UK. And uh, the new UK Prime Minister, Theresa May, put it quite well in Prime Minister's questions at the dispatch box across from Jeremy, Cor Jeremy Corbyn when she was uh, advising him about what's going to be happening in the future. She said, you know, the Labour Party, your, his party, uh, you guys will be busy tearing yourselves apart with your little schism over the next few months. Uh, she didn't quite say I encourage this, but you know, that's the idea. And while you're busy tearing each other down, while the left implodes and, and turns against itself in its uh, quest to be the biggest victim, uh, the, the conservatives, the Tory party uh, in the UK, we're going to be busy reuniting the country in the wake of the Brexit vote. So um, just bear that in mind. And, and the threat there is that while you guys are busy squabbling, the, the uh, Tories have already you know, fixed their problem in the, in the wake of Brexit. They're working together. And by comparison, they are going to be miles in front of a Labour Party that's too busy fighting within itself for power to really address any issues. And so when it comes time for the next election, guess who's going to be standing uh, pretty? They're going to be consolidated. They're going to be working together. They're going to have their manifesto done, they're going to have their shit together, and they're going to have a couple of years of accomplishments that they've been able to do because their members are actually working together to get stuff done. Whether you like it or don't like it, the fact is they're, act they're actually able to get stuff done. So if you want to get something done in that system, that's the party you need to be talking to because the other party is too busy acting like children to get any work done. And you're going to have see a similar kind of thing here in the United States. And um, I mentioned this a couple of years ago about the Democrats and how they can't leave, like, the Second Amendment alone. You can't leave my rights alone. When I would be your ally on so many other issues that are important to Democrats that I don't agree with the, the Republicans on, but I can't be an ally because in order to be an ally to the Democrats on those issues they care about, I would have to forsake the issues I care most about, and I'm unwilling to do that. And there is only one party in the country at the moment that has a snowball's chance in hell of actually standing up for the issue that is the most important to me. And because of that, I have to plug my nose and take the rough with the smooth and vote for a party that doesn't like gay rights so much, not really into gay marriage, not really into abortion rights, not really into a lot of th things on social issues that I wish the GOP would just leave the hell alone, uh, but they won't. But because of their stance on the Second Amendment, and all that follows from that, it is, there's no contest as to which party I have to plug my nose and side with in, on this election. If the Democrats could leave the gun control alone and one or two other minor issues that aren't really important to them alone, I would, I would be able to work with them much more than I am now. But because they want ideological purity, this is the problem of authoritarianism, because they want this kind of uh, purity in, in this weird cult-like way that they've been insisting on that's leading to these schisms happening between left-leaning parties both here and abroad, uh, I, I can't work with them. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, get on board with that, particularly when it's going to come at the cost of so many other things that I do care about, uh, that I'd be willing to negotiate on if only they could leave the important shit alone, but they can't. So I've got, if I'm going to vote at all, and I may well not, it's going to have to be with uh, Republicans who, you know, if I'm going to vote, any, any person who says, I'm pro Second Amendment and I'm going to oppose any new legislation, that person's going to get my vote. And it doesn't matter to me if, after he says that, and I'm going to vote for every abortion restriction law, every reverse gay marriage law, every, you know, everything that you can think of that the left would hate. If they say I'm going to vote for all that, but I will oppose any and all new restrictions on gun rights for, uh, law-abiding citizens, that person is going to get my vote. The other problems will have to be fixed in the fullness of time after it's crystal clear to the left that they're not going to win on the gun control issue. And uh, whether that's because they just keep losing outright because of the gun control issue, 
or because they tear themselves apart and lose any ability to get anything done, it doesn't much matter to me. What matters to me is first and foremost protecting the constitutional rights uh, of citizens, the ones that are actually enumerated, and then everything else after that can be fixed in the fullness of time. So if gay marriage gets repealed, you know, one Supreme Court vote could do it, then so be it. That issue will just be put on the back burner and it will just have to wait. And uh, fortunately, I, I stand a pretty good chance of getting my way on the Second Amendment in the same way that people in the UK are going to get their way, they got their way on Brexit, and they're going to get their way uh, if they're conservatively, conservative leaning because of the infighting that is creating uh, incompetence on the left. So I, I guess my advice to the left is keep it up because you're going to make sure that I get my way on the issues that I want and then in some years to come after it's perfectly clear that you cannot win on this issue, I might have some, uh, some time left over to help you. Or not. You, your party might be gone by then. Who knows? Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts on this, uh, this infighting that's going on and what the, the consequences for that could well mean, both here in the United States and in the United Kingdom. And I look, I look forward to seeing uh, how large of a tantrum the left can throw next week. Have a great day.